I was scheduled to go on a business trip for a week. It meant leaving my husband and daughter alone at home. To ease my worries, my husband firmly said, Leave it to me. We stayed in regular contact for the week, and it seemed like there were no particular problems. However, when I returned from the business trip, my daughter looked terribly ill. According to my husband, it seems she caught a cold. She was sound asleep, making it difficult to take her to the hospital. Feeling exhausted from work myself, I decided to sleep right away that day. The next day, to my shock, my daughter collapsed and had to be rushed to the hospital. The doctor began to talk about the cause of the collapse. Stunned, I confront my husband and he becomes evasive. My name is Megan Adams and I'm 35 years old. I work hard as a company employee for the sake of my family. My family consists of my husband, Aaron, who is the same age as me, and our daughter, Kendra. We live in an apartment together. Aaron met me at a mixer that a friend invited me to. He caught my attention because he was quiet and didn't seem to talk to anyone, so I took the initiative to start a conversation with him. I wondered why Aaron, with his gentle and modest personality, was like that. I must say, I've always been the type to be at the center of the class since my student days. I can't leave quiet kids alone and always end up meddling. Aaron used to say shyly in the past, When I'm with you, Megan, I feel relieved and reassured. Upon hearing that, I thought, I want to protect this person, and ended up marrying him. However, after marriage, I came to realize that this choice was a mistake. I was working vigorously as the top salesperson in the company. In addition to leading my subordinates, I was also responsible for mentoring newcomers. I was entrusted with the role of project manager for new projects and often went on business trips for presentations. Although I was busy, I loved my job and was willing to work as hard as necessary for my family. On the other hand, Aaron seemed to have been given mundane tasks such as managing the file room at the company. He didn't seem to take his job very seriously and his income was only about half of mine, if not less. When Aaron came home from work, he wouldn't offer to help with household chores but would just lie on the sofa playing mobile games. When I nagged him or complained, he reluctantly helped with the housework. He never did anything voluntarily. In the worst cases, he pretends to babysit Kendra and uses it as an excuse to push all the housework onto me. Even during babysitting, he's just holding his mobile game with one hand and glancing at Kendra. Hey, could you please stop playing games and play with Kendra for a bit? Aaron would not listen to my warnings. You're always so annoying. You don't have to worry so much. Kendra seems to be having fun playing alone. You're too naggy. It's situations like this that gives me a headache. I wanted to talk to someone about it, but there was no one I could consult with. My in-laws dote on their son, Aaron. Especially my mother-in-law, who engages in classic daughter-in-law bullying, saying things like, Make sure Aaron eats more nutritious food. Or, Housework is the wife's job. My in-laws intend to live with us after retirement. That's also been a concern for me. Since the beginning of our marriage, I've dreamed of the two of us working hard together and owning our own home. That dream is now crumbling before my eyes. Our life has deviated far from that ideal. However, with a daughter in the picture, I can't bring myself to divorce. I didn't want to make my daughter grow up in a single-parent household, and I'm also feeling uneasy about the uneven split of assets with Aaron. One day, my husband approached me with a gleaming look and made this plea. I've had an awakening. I'm going to put more effort into my work. Aaron's sudden statement surprised me. He never showed any intention of taking work seriously before, so what brought about this change? Oh, does that mean you'll be working hard on organizing the file room? Exactly. I'm going to become a specialist in file room management. I'm sorry for causing so much trouble up until now. From now on, I'll also be earning for the family. Aaron declared this confidently to me. I'm not sure what led to his change, but he seems genuinely determined to try harder. I didn't fully understand what he meant, but if he's motivated to work, then that's good. 
I see. I understand. I'll support you, so do your best. Perhaps he is trying to make a difference there and get a promotion. I don't know how it will turn out, but it's better than nothing. With that in mind, I decided to support Aaron. Looking back now, I realize my thinking was too naive. But back then, I still had trust and affection for Aaron. Since then, Aaron, who used to always come home on time, started working overtime and coming in on weekends. He seems to be working seriously, even doing some work on his computer at home. My husband also started playing with Kendra more often. I was truly impressed by the change in him. Although I remained busy as usual, his efforts inspired me to work even harder. I made an effort not to bring work home and focused on completing tasks at the office to ensure Kendra wouldn't feel lonely. Meanwhile, the expectations from the company were unexpectedly high. I was appointed as the head of a huge project that could change the fate of the company. Moreover, due to the project, I would have to go on a business trip for about a week, so I decided to discuss it with my husband. And then... That's amazing to be entrusted with such a big job. You should go. I still have paid leave left, so I'll take responsibility for Kendra and watch over her properly. Aaron says so with a smile, without blaming me. His words were reassuring, but I couldn't help feeling unsure if it was really okay. But for a whole week? You've been working so hard. It's alright. It's because I work hard regularly that the company trusts me. My boss is understanding, so he'll excuse me for taking care of the kids if needed. But taking care of Kendra will be tough, you know. She's a good kid, but still so young. Can you handle feeding her and giving her a bath properly? No problem. I've been getting better at childcare lately. So trust me and leave it to me like you're boarding a big ship. If you say so. I understand. Take care of Kendra for a while then. I decided to rely on his words and left for a week-long business trip with a heavy heart. Still worried, I called home several times during the trip. According to Aaron, Kendra seemed fine even without me. But there was one thing that bothered me. I hadn't heard Kendra's voice once during the week-long trip. Even when I asked my husband to let me hear her voice, he said she was either asleep or having a meal. Well, if she hears my voice, Kendra might throw a tantrum. I was a bit worried, but Aaron was with her, so it should be okay. I convinced myself against my better judgment, unaware that I would later regret it. I managed to complete the trip somehow, despite various difficulties. When I returned home at night, Aaron greeted me with a Welcome back! However, I couldn't see Kendra anywhere. Huh? What happened to Kendra? Isn't it too early for her to be sleeping? When I asked... Aaron replied with a somewhat awkward expression. It seems like she caught a cold. What? Hastily, I went to check on her condition and found her sleeping in the children's room. Despite being apart for just one week, she looked much thinner and had a pale face. As I approached, there was a faint odor, and Kendra's collar was slightly dirty. She caught a cold today, so I didn't bathe her. I tried to change her clothes, but she cried and refused, so I let her sleep as is. I see. Is she okay? Should we take her to the hospital even now? When I suggested this, Aaron hurriedly stopped me. No, no. She ate plenty, so she'll be fine. You can trust that I took care of her. But... It's so unfair to wake Kendra up when she's sleeping so soundly like this, don't you think? It's better for her to rest and recover slowly. You must be tired too, so don't push yourself. Certainly, there was some truth in what Aaron said. I may be worrying too much, and Kendra might just recover nicely by morning. After much deliberation, I decided that if Kendra still seemed unwell in the morning, I would take her to the hospital. That day, I was also exhausted from a business trip, so I went to bed early. However, the next morning brought a turn of events. While preparing breakfast, I heard Kendra's voice from behind saying, Mommy? Kendra staggered towards me, her complexion pale and her eyes vacant. Worried, I asked her, What's wrong? But she didn't respond. Instead, she collapsed right there. I instinctively screamed and rushed to Kendra's side. 
Kendra, what's wrong? Are you okay? I desperately called out to Kendra, but Kendra remained limp and didn't wake up. Aaron, who had just woken up, exclaimed, Huh? What's going on? I thought something was seriously wrong with my daughter, so I tried to call an ambulance. But for some reason, Aaron tried to stop me. No, no. Calling an ambulance is too much. It'll just cause a nuisance to the neighbors, won't it? It's just a cold, so letting her rest should be enough. Frustrated by Aaron's nonchalant remarks, I exclaimed. Huh? How can you say that in this situation? With such a terrible complexion, there's no way it's just a cold, right? Save your excuses for later. Ignoring Aaron, who kept on talking, I dialed 911 without hesitation. Later, Kendra was urgently transported by ambulance. At the hospital, the doctor explained Kendra's symptoms. Dehydrated and malnourished. You two haven't been feeding her properly, have you? As per protocol, I'll have to report both of you. I was stunned by the doctor's words. While I was away, Aaron was supposed to take good care of Kendra. Yet why did a diagnosis like malnutrition and dehydration come up? I couldn't help but confront Aaron. What on earth is going on here? Didn't you say you were taking care of Kendra properly? I, I don't know. It can't be like this. This has to be some kind of mistake. I did take care of her properly. My husband was nearly frantic, trying to justify himself to me. However, his eyes were restless, his complexion was pale, and his behavior was suspicious. After a while, the police arrived, and we were each interrogated separately. My alibi of being on a business trip was proven, and with Kendrick regaining consciousness and testifying, I was acquitted. On the other hand, Aaron was taken away by the police. As Kendra calmed down and spoke, a surprising fact came to light. It turns out that Aaron had left Kendra alone at home for a week. My husband left two bottles of water and $20 on the table for Kendra, instructing her to buy bread at the nearby convenience store. It's a secret from mom. If you keep it secret, I'll buy you the character-themed toy you've been wanting. Before leaving, Aaron apparently said that to Kendra. However, Kendra couldn't open the water bottles and, with a dry throat, tried to drink from the sink, but she couldn't reach it, so she could only drink only a little. Moreover, even when she went to the convenience store, she didn't know what to buy, so she only bought a few snacks. During the week I was away, Kendra couldn't get proper nutrition and suffered from dehydration. At just four years old, Kendra couldn't ask for help from the neighbors or call me. Everything Aaron said about Kendra over the phone was a lie. I was boiling with anger. But where on earth was Aaron going, leaving his daughter behind? I decided to investigate him. I brought Kendra home after she recovered and took care of her exclusively. After Kendra fell asleep, I decided to check Aaron's desktop computer in the study. I had seen him type in the password before, so I knew it. And then an astonishing truth came to light. That idiot. I'll never forgive him. A few days later, Aaron called, and he was furious. Hey, what's going on here? Why is the house empty? There's no furniture or belongings. Where are you and Kendra now? Aaron, who had been thoroughly questioned by the police, seemed quite surprised when he returned home. And for good reason, as the house was empty, neither my daughter nor I were anywhere to be found. When Aaron, with an anxious tone, asked me questions, I responded calmly and matter-of-factly. We moved, that's why. Your belongings are temporarily stored in a rental storage. Go and pick them up later by yourself. Huh? Don't mess around. What are you doing acting on your own? Don't mess around? That's my line. Just when I thought you were neglecting Kendra, it turns out you were cheating. I'm truly disgusted. Upon my words, Aaron muttered, Huh? And froze. He probably hadn't expected his affair to be exposed. There was plenty of evidence of his infidelity. The other woman was a 25-year-old part-time worker at his company. Aaron was not working on his computer at home for work, but rather exchanging emails with her. All his claims of overtime and working on holidays were lies. He had been spending time on his affair. It seems even when I was away on a business trip for a week, he was constantly at his mistress's apartment. 
since the apartment we lived in was under my name, I decided to vacate it promptly. Currently, Kendra and I are staying at my parents' house. I'll discuss divorce matters through a lawyer. I've already claimed damages from your affair partner. You better prepare to pay child support and damages too. Upon my words, Aaron desperately apologized over the phone. I, I'm sorry. Things were going well at work, and I was tempted by her. If you don't want me to, fine. I won't see her anymore. From now on, I'll devote myself to you and Kendra. So please spare me the divorce. Aaron's words didn't move my heart at all. Instead, I looked down on him for trying to shift the blame onto his affair partner. There's no way I can believe a word you say. Working hard? If I trusted you, I wouldn't have been cheated on so easily. I was foolish to be deceived. P please forgive me. I truly regret what I've done. There's no way I can forgive you. Leaving four-year-old Kendra alone to go to your affair partner's place? What were you planning to do if something happened to her? You're unfit to be a father. Don't ever come near me and Kendra again. With that, I hung up the phone. After, I was able to divorce Aaron successfully. Custody of Kendra naturally fell to me. The compensation and child support were paid in one lump sum by Aaron's family. Aaron, who was already slacking off at work, turned out to have taken a sick day instead of a paid day off that day. In other words, it was a sneaky day off. When his affair and sneaky absence were both exposed at work, Aaron resigned. Currently, he's working day jobs to repay the compensation and child support paid by his parents. His affair partner also ended up in debt and paid me the compensation in one lump sum. She has already quit her job and seems to be chased by debt collectors every day. I, on the other hand, have moved into a secure apartment with Kendra, and I'm spending my Kendra days in peace and quiet. If my trip had been longer, my daughter's life could have been at stake. I'm relieved that Kendra is safe. From now on, even if it's for work, I'll refuse overnight business trips. Fortunately, with my track record, my work is going smoothly. In the future, I want to prioritize my daughter and watch her grow.